for you every step of the way. I need you to raise your voice and sing it.
it out. God, we believe that all things work together for the good of us who love you, who are called according to your purpose. And God, we have gathered in this place. We have gathered literally around the world to say, we are the called. We are the called. We are the called according to your purpose. We are the called. It is fitting that we praise you. It is fitting that we worship you. It is fitting that we lift up holy hands and lift up our voices and pour out our lives and break open our alabaster boxes. It is fitting that we would come together just to call on your name. It is the fitting thing 
for the upright to do to call on you to declare your goodness in the land of the living to know that you said you would never leave us that you would never forsake us you said you'd be our God you said you'd be our guide even to the very end of the age and yay though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death we fear no evil because you're with us your rod and your staff they comfort us God you make tables before us in the presence of our enemies you anoint our head with oil and our cup overflows and truly goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and we're dwelling in the house of the Lord forever thank you that we're in your house thank you that we're able to come together thank you that we're still alive thank you that we have a breath in our body thank you that we have strength in our limbs thank you that we are clothed in our right minds thank you that the devil thought he had us but we made it over thank you that somehow we made it through and we're still here now calling on your name for great is your faithfulness towards us. Morning by morning by morning by morning by morning. New mercies we see. All we've ever needed your hands have provided. Because you're so magnificent. You're omnipotent great. You are able to do exceedingly abundantly above what we could ask or think even now God as we're in this place as we're worshiping there's things on our minds and stuff that we're worried about and stuff that we're concerned about and things that we're thinking about God we lay it all at the altar we leave it all here we cast all of our cares on you because we know that you care for us we are not going to carry it you said that we should be anxious for nothing but in everything with prayer and supplication with thanksgiving make our requests known unto God and the peace that passes understanding guard our hearts and our minds in you guard us God guard us guard us guard us guard ours guard us from our fears guard us from the attack of the enemy guard us from the evil negative voices in the middle of the night guard us from the plans of the people that don't like us guard us from the plans of the people that don't even understand us God have your way in us and then God do exceedingly abundantly above whatever we can ask or think according to the power that's at work within us and even now use us use us we're about to pray together use us so that not only is it in this room and not only is it in every room that's connected in this particular moment or will be connected through the week but that God it will be something that permeates the area cover the earth with your glory cover North Carolina with your glory cover America with your glory cover the continent with your glory God have your way in the world your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And we'll praise you for what you do, for what you make of us. Let's all pray the Lord's Prayer together and all say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. If you mean that, just put your hands together and praise the Lord. Come on, if you know he's working it out for you. If you can say, I know it's working. I know he's working in all things. Come on, can you put your hands together? Can we worship the Lord right here? I know you're working. I know you're working. I know you're working in all things. I know you're working. Even the stuff I don't like, I know you're working. Even the stuff I didn't plan, I know you're working. Even the things I don't understand, I know you're working. Even the things outside of my control, you are sovereign. 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 You're sovereign. Praise the Lord. You may be seated in the name of the Lord. We want to welcome all of you, name by name, person by person, the world overcomer as Christian church. Anybody glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? 
Oh, I asked a question that was weak. I said, anybody glad, glad to be in the service? If you're glad to be tuning in live with us around the world, just clap or put something in the comment. We're excited that you're with us. It's baby dedications this morning. And, uh, and so I want to dedicate the children and so will the parents and godparents. And we're in this Holy Ghost anointed moment of sensing the presence of God and praying and singing and shouting and all of it. Let's, uh, let's dedicate these babies. We're Richard Alonzo Carter Jr., Isla Nicole Hinton, and Aiden Washington. Will you and your family, well, your family got to bring you down, but come on down. And, and so... Richard Carter Jr., that's all the way over here, right, right? Number one, no, you want to stay over there? Just stay over there, I'm sorry, my fault. So Richard, and then Isla, and then Aiden. Pastor Tyrus, this is your people right here? Your granddaughter, wow, praise the Lord. Can y'all put your hands together for family? That's kind of weak. Can you praise God for family? Can you praise God for family? I say, can you praise God for family? Can you praise God for family? I say, can you praise God for family? Can you praise God for family? I'm so glad that you're here. It's baby dedication is something that we do. It's it's interesting, we can think of it as a christening, or, but really what we're doing is we're reminding ourselves that these children belong to God, that we are stewards of their lives. We are stewards of all of the resources, we're stewards. And right now, y'all are stewards of these children. Your mama decided to have you, but God decided to send you. And they're here on a mission. And our job is to raise them in the fear and knowledge of the Lord, to, to, to keep in mind that they're on loan to us from the Lord and to look at them and see them and pray for them and believe God for their potential and believe God for their future and believe God for their destiny, to watch them closely and to know the gifts and the power that God has put in them so that nothing can shake them not just from God, but from us. I think the power of baby dedication is not just we're dedicating the children to the Lord, but this is also a moment for us to remember how powerful family is. We almost, some of us were almost taught that like church was more important than, than family. Like, and there's a whole lot of folk who do church better than family. Now, let's not be that way. Let's be somebody who know how to love the Lord, but also know how to take care of our children and know how to raise our children to the third and the fourth and the fifth and generation and to leave an inheritance for our children's children's children. This is an important moment. It is the coming together of both. It is the combination of kingdom and worship and praising the Lord and also remembering that family matters and children matter and how we raise them is important. We're going to pray for them and prayer is powerful but your children are a reflection of you I wish I had a witness in the building you want them to be right you got to be right want them to talk right you got to talk right don't want them to cuss folk out well they can't hear you cuss folk out you might do it but they can't hear it no they can't you, you, you don't want them to lie they can't you have, you have to you want them to do their work you got to do your work you want their room clean clean your room they are a reflection of us. And any of us who have ever been really frustrated with our teenagers, we frustrated more with ourselves than we are with them because they are us. But this moment is an anointed moment. It is such the mixture of the power of the kingdom and what God has started from the beginning. We're not eggs hatched to be by ourselves. No, we family. And it's important for us to do this. I want all the dads to stand. If you're somebody's father, can you stand with me in here, gentlemen? And uh, we're going to pray for these children. I want you to get as close as you can to the elder or whoever it is that are with you. And, and uh, y'all come close together and either put your hand on the child or put your hand on the elder. And gentlemen, if you, if you could just shoot some of this, just 
point some of your hand here and just your the anointing and and just to, to believe God. God, we thank you right now that no weapon formed against us can prosper. God, we thank you right now that the attack against us has been thwarted in this particular moment. God, I thank you for not just life, but I thank you for parents. I thank you for grandparents. I thank you for godparents. I thank you, Lord, that we have decided that we're not going to let the streets raise our children. We're not going to let TV raise our children. We're not going to let society raise our children. We're not going to let the state raise our children. No, God, we are making a statement right now that we are going to raise these children ourselves. We're going to put our hands in their dough. We are going to put our footprint in their lives. Lives. We realize they are little blank slates and God we are going to fill their memory cards up first with a knowledge of you and a knowledge of us and what we hold valuable God. We are not looking for anybody else to raise our children but us. You have given them to us for just a moment and so God we acknowledge your sovereignty but then we also are determined to be accountable to the call that is on us right now as parents and grandparents and, and uncles and aunties and not just us God, not just us at the in the front but every man that's in the room God, our sons, our daughters our grandchildren God turn the hearts of our children to us and our hearts to them God break the yoke, break the attack of the enemy against us to separate us from our children God I thank you that no weapon formed against us can prosper and that these children children belong to you from the crown of their heads to the soles of their feet no sickness no disease no asthma God no learning this God we're believing right now that you are going to have your way in them we might as well trust you tis so sweet to trust you we put our trust in you have your way in us kingdom of God come in us will of God be done in us right now in Jesus name we pray we all said together, amen. Put your hands together and bless the Lord. Gentlemen, you may be seated. All right. He is not happy about it. Y'all praise God. Praise God for Mr. Carter. Ah. Uh, Praise him, boy. This is Isla. Praise God for Isla, y'all. Pastor Tyrus' granddaughter. Y'all praise God for her. God for Aiden. Oh my them eyes, Lord. What's going on, boy? Yeah. Bless you all. Praise God for them. Praise God for them. Y'all go back to your seat at the at the end of the service, we have like a little reception over there to my right, your left, in the fellowship hall, and I'll be there if you'd like to take a picture with me or something, hopefully, if you'd like to. Can we give to the work of the kingdom of God? Can we give? Can you clap for the privilege of giving? Can we give? If you need an offering envelope, you can simply raise your hand, and one of the geek gatekeepers will come to you quickly and give you an offering envelope. And you also can just take a picture of the QR code that's on the screens and and uh, you'll be able to give if you're watching live stream around the world. This ain't Netflix. You can't use somebody else's password. You need to give to the work of the kingdom of God. And everything that is being streamed to you is supported by you. And all of you that are in the room, it just doesn't happen to my magic. The thing that's so interesting about this 
is that we sow in faith and reap a harvest and it's how the kingdom moves forward there's a passage of scripture in mark chapter 10 verse 29 i'm gonna read it really quickly and i'm not gonna spend too much time we've been in service we got started we had some technical difficulties this morning and got started a couple of minutes late but that's all right but in mark chapter 10 verse 29 jesus says truly i tell you no one who has left home or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for me and the gospel will fail to receive a hundred times as much in this present age. Homes, brothers, sisters, mothers, children, and fields, along with persecutions, and in the age to come, eternal life. But many who are first will be last and the last first. If you're familiar with this passage, this is the passage of the rich young ruler. Rich young man runs up to Jesus and says, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus tells him, keep the commandments. And he says, I've done all of that since I was a boy. And Jesus says, one thing you lack. One thing you lack. Go sell everything you have and give it to the poor and come and follow me. And the Bible says the man went away sad because he had great wealth. And Jesus said how difficult it is for the rich to get into the kingdom. I looked at the passage. I, I've analyzed it so many times and trying to figure out why would Jesus ask him to give everything, sell everything he has and give it to the poor. And the rabbinical studies talk about it's a third. And, but I, I think we miss the end of it because at the end when the disciples say man it's not easy being saved Jesus says yeah but with God all things are possible Peter speaks up for us and says we left everything to follow you and Jesus says yeah and no one who makes a sacrifice will, will fail to receive blessing on the other side of it the rich young ruler walks away sad because he had great wealth, but he had no idea what he would have gained if he had been obedient. Jesus is saying, yeah, he missed an opportunity. I didn't tell him to go sell everything he had and give it to the poor just for him to have nothing because no one who makes a sacrifice will fail to reap a harvest if they faint not. So on the other side of sacrifice is always a reaping. This is the challenge for us today because we don't really sow. And I don't mean sow in church. I mean sow. We're not agricultural. We, we're unfamiliar with the seed death life process. There's this guy I follow on Instagram who's always telling you, you, you like lemons? And he takes a lemon and he shows it to you and he wraps it up in a paper and, he put, and then he hides it and takes it out and it sprouts. And then it's like he's trying to teach everybody how to plant a lemon seed. We're so disconnected from this idea of planting and growth and harvest that we're unfamiliar with the idea that one lemon becomes a thousand if you sow it. You can eat it, but if you sow it, if you put it in the dark for a second and let it sprout and then sow it and then plant it outside, one seed becomes a harvest of fruit, but you'll have to sow it first. He said no one who sows fails to reap. And in times like these, we need to reap. In times like these, we don't need to just be eaters. We need to be sowers. I've been saying this all year. God provides seed to the sower and bread to the eater. And we live in an eater world. But you don't want to just be an eater. You want to be a sower. Amen. Tell somebody to be a sower. Be a sower. Come on, tell somebody to be a sower. You don't want to just be a sower. You don't want to just sow into your bed. You don't want to just sow into the kingdom. I know I, I can't help but say this. I can't help but preach the balance of it. And, of course, you know, the, the guys that raised me would fuss at me about taking the focus off of just giving to God. But it's not just about giving to God. It's about sowing, period. It's about learning how money works. It's about getting you some cryptocurrency. It's about, it's about you not eating every bit of the seed you get. It's about you getting your, your paycheck, your money, and then deciding what parts of it you're going to do. And if you don't think about the tenth in terms of tithing, then you also won't think about the tenth in terms of saving. And you won't think about the tenth in terms of investment. And you won't think, and you won't be prepared for the end of your age. 
Not just the end of the age, the end of your age. Because you live long enough, live long enough, you're going to need some kind of plan, some kind of retirement. I pray that you will not just be eaters, but that you will be sowers. That God will provide seed for sowers and bread for eaters. I'm praying that God will provide both. Yes, he'll meet your need, but you will have the wisdom not to eat all of your seed and sow it. Sow it. Won't spend it all on things that just decline, things that are just liabilities, but that we will come together as a people and search for assets. And sowing into the kingdom exercises that muscle and gets you full of the faith that is required to believe that a harvest is coming. Come on, let's pray. God, I thank you that a harvest is coming. Thank you that a harvest is coming. Thank you, God, that a harvest is coming. Thank you that there is a harvest coming. We will reap a harvest if we faint not. You said here in your word that no one who sows will fail to reap not a one of us and with the persecutions that come with the misunderstandings that come with the anger that comes with the problems that come with the difficulties that come with life God may we then expect that that is a confirmation of your hand on us and your blessing on us and your power in our lives God will reap a harvest if we faint not take our offering take our tithe God and multiply it supernaturally to all all of the things that we're determined to do together as kingdom to all the things that we're determined to do together as world overcomers in this room and watching live around the world God use us for your plan and purpose don't just bless us use us kingdom may the kingdom come and your will be done in us and through us and we'll praise you for the harvest fruit that we reap, for the blessing that's connected to obedience, to the power that at, at work in us who are walking with you. Have your way in us. Kingdom of God, come. Will of God be done in Jesus' name. We all sit together. God bless you as you give. As the bucket passes you, just stand up just for a second. Worship the Lord with us for just a minute. I'll come right back. On as you stand on your feet, if you believe that God is turning it for you. We're going to sing about it a little bit more. Would you join us? Yeah, 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 yeah. The devil can steal, kill, and destroy. But we serve a God who does much more than we could ever imagine. Whatever happened is working. He's turning it around right now. I can make it down. Take what the enemy meant for evil and turn it you are. Take what the enemy meant for evil and turn it you are. Take what the enemy meant for evil and turn it for my good. Watch and turn it, turn it for my good.
together if you believe God's able to take what the devil meant for evil. I said, put your hands together if you believe God is able to take what the devil meant for evil. Turn it around for my good. Turn it around for my good. Turn it around for my good. Make a way for me. Make a way for me. Turn it around. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. In the name of the Lord, we want to welcome every one of you. So excited you came to worship with us in the room. If you're a first-time visitor with us, thank you for coming. And uh, in the main lobby to my left, your right, there is a connection center there. And we'll be welcome. We'd love to talk to you and give you something to thank you for coming on behalf of the leadership. If you're watching live stream around the world for the very first time, welcome. Don't know how you heard about us. TikTok, Instagram, who knows how you, somebody told you. People mostly find out about church through someone else. And so however you found out about us, we're excited that you're with us. In the comment, you can say first-time visitors. Someone will reach out to you and say something to you. World Overcomers is a young church. We're 21 years old. God has given us this vision, balanced victory for the God-designed life. And what that simply means is that we have decided to follow Jesus, no turning back. When I was younger, we used to sing a song that said, I have decided to follow Jesus. Anybody remember that song? Any church people in here? I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. Don't get a key. Don't, don't, no turning back. The, though none go with me, still I will follow. Though none go with me, still I will follow. Though no, none go with me, still I will follow. No turning back. The world behind me, the cross before. I wish I had a church somebody. The world behind me, the cross before me. I have decided to follow Jesus. Where he's going to take me, I'm not sure. If I'm following Jesus, then he's leading. And if he's leading, then I have to trust him. And I got to put my hand in his hand. And I got to hold to his hand. And I got to believe that he will lead me into pastures green. And yea, even if I find myself in a difficult place, he makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He's the God of not just my today, but the God of my tomorrow. And I pray, but I pray carefully. And I say, make me careful about what I'm asking God for because I know that he's got a plan for me. I know that his plan is not to harm me. I wish I had somebody with some faith in here. I know that his plan is to give me hope and a future and I can't tell God how to be God in my life. I can't tell God how to deal with me. I can't tell God. I don't know what he's about to do, but I don't know what he's about to make happen, but I believe he's able to turn the evil for my good. He's shown me. He's been there for me. He's made a way for me. And I expect to see his hand in my life. And so we're glad you're with us. And we know that there are so many churches you could be at, so many churches you could go to in the greater Raleigh-Durham Triangle area. And the fact that you're with us, we're so excited. So many churches you could tune in and, and be with us. And I know women's empowerment was yesterday. And I heard Sarah Jakes Roberts dropped a word. And I know so much. So there's so many places you could, so much word. There was a time when the only way to get the word was to get up and go to church. Now we stream in the word to everybody. So many ways and so many people you could listen to. And the fact that you decided to give us some of your minutes, we are honored. We trust you since the presence of God and all family that came for first first time for baby dedication. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And uh, I promise you I'm not going to be before you long, just maybe two or three hours. No, just maybe 30 minutes. I'm going to share a word with you really quickly, but we're excited that you're with us. And we trust you since the presence of God. We don't walk by the feeling, but it's good to feel it. We don't walk by it, but it's good to sense him and know that he's with us. I trust you sense that presence of God. I trust you're ready to hear a word. I do have a word to share with you, and we're glad that you're here. Just a couple of quick announcements. Gentlemen, we have this men's event that's happening with our men's ministry here, and it's something that we're focusing on here, but we've got a men's event that's happening first Saturday in May. It's coming up quickly, and it's, it's an event that's happening on it's the first Saturday in May on land that the church owns. We own 63 acres on Cheek Road, and we're having an event there. Gentlemen, we're inviting you to come. It's like a tailgating uh, cookout, great big event. Gentlemen, please come. It's free. Just come. We're going to share together and talk about the vision and where we're going, not just as a church, but as a men's ministry and, uh, and even that land. So we want you to, gentlemen, we want you to know about that. Save that date. And um, then Josh told me to please mention that there's that there's a 
auditions for the worship team and uh, on Thursday. So they're looking for more singers. So if you can sing, say if you can sing. That was weak. I said if you can sing. Don't bring your mama up here with her Bible talking about, I know my baby. Well, we'll be able to tell you if you can sing. If you can sing. Not making joyful noise. If you can sing. Now, I, I sit in here and I listen and I hear folk behind me all the time that I'm, I'm going to be like, you ought to be up here worshiping the Lord with us. And, uh, and so we, we need you. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, definitely gentlemen, dudes, you know you can sing. Stop it. Stop it. You can sing and still be masculine, right? You can still, you ain't got to be up here. You can be on your two solid feet. We'll let you say, great is the Lord. You ain't got to say, great. No, you can stand solid. It's a man's church. So, gentlemen, come audition. And uh, that's happening on Thursday. New members class is happening on April 21st on Sunday. So if you're newly joining the church or you just want to join and you're just like, when can I join? Just by being here, you are already on your way to being a member. And But on the 21st of April, new members class all right, let's look at the word. How many have a Bible with your device? Throw something above your head really quickly. I've got 30 minutes. Let me share a word with you. Turn with me in your Bibles to Luke chapter number 23. We're also going to look at Matthew chapter 7, which we looked at last week. But first, Luke 23 and verse 32. Can you jump on your feet with me for just a moment? It's become our custom to stand for the reading of the word of God. Thank you for just agreeing to stand. There's something powerful about us agreeing together. And uh, I figure if we can stand for the flag, we can stand for the word. I say it almost every time, but there's something about showing some respect to the word. Thank you very much. Luke 23, verse 32. It's on your screens. If you're watching around the world, it's on your screens. If you're in the room, we didn't got the NIV. Let's jump into it. 30 minutes. Here we go. It says, two other men, both criminals, were also led out with him to be executed. And when they came to the place called the skull, they crucified Jesus there along with the criminals. One on his right, the other on his left. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. Verse 38 says, there was a written notice above him which read, this is the king of the Jews. And one of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said, since you're under the same sentence? We are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said to Jesus, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus answered him and said, truly, I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. And Matthew chapter 7 and verse 13 and verse 14, once again, reading out the NIV, and once again, you can look on the screens and read along with us. Verse 13, Jesus is talking, and Jesus says, enter through the narrow gate. Make every effort to enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many enter through that. But small is the gate, and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. The title of my message this morning is The Narrow Door. The Narrow Door. Bow your head, let me pray. Now, Lord, I pray that you'll speak, God, just now. Truth. Open our eyes, we want to see. Open our ears, we want to hear. Open our hearts, we want to believe. Thank you, God, for this group that gathered together in the room. Thank you for the group that's watching literally around the world. This is not a common thing to sit and listen to someone speak. And so, God, thank you for this moment. Thank you for the obedience to assemble together. And, God, we pray that we will receive a great return on the investment of this moment, that our spirit man will hear something that will change our lives forever, and that we will reap a harvest if we faint not as a result of sowing, listening in this moment, we'll reap a harvest of righteousness that will impact us and our family. Have your way in us. Kingdom of God come. Will of God be done. In Jesus' name we pray. We all say it together. Amen. You may be seated in the name of the Lord, the narrow door. If I could draw your attention really quickly to verse 13, Matthew 7, 13. This is the second week in a row we've looked at it where Jesus says, listen, enter through the narrow gate. Do everything you can to get in through the narrow door. Get through the door that is in common. 
Because broad is the way, wide is the way, broad is the road that leads to destruction. And there's a whole lot of folk on there, but small is the gate and narrow is the way that leads to life and only a few find it. Enter through the narrow door. If you don't hear nothing else from me today, enter through the narrow door. Tell somebody the narrow door. Come on, you have to talk. Somebody, tell somebody the narrow door. The narrow door. The other day I was driving somewhere and, I, and I, I pulled up into a parking lot and it was just jammed. I mean, it was just no parking spaces. I was in my pickup truck. I've got a pickup truck. I think it's a 2015 or something Ford F-150. Got my old truck. I'm just riding around in the truck and I pulled up to this parking spot, parking lot, and it was jammed. There were no spaces. And finally, I saw a space over there. I don't know if this ever happened to you, but as I got over there to it, I thought to myself, I don't really know if I can fit into this parking spot, but I'm going to figure out how to do it. I'm going to figure out how to, and so eat, because there weren't any other spaces. So the other spaces were really far, and I didn't feel like walking. So I'm like, I'm going to, so I, I backed in, and a couple times, and thank God for the, beep, 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 because I'm, I'm about to hit, and then I, beep, 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 and, I'm, and I finally fit on in there, and I'm like, yeah, look at that. Look at them driving skills. Backed in here. All right. It's great. All right. Feeling good. Woo. Made it. Then I looked and I thought, hmm, how am I going to get out? Because I was in the determination to fit into the narrow spot. I didn't consider that the more narrow the parking, the more narrow the space to get out. And so I, I, I don't know if this has ever happened to you, but I opened the door, the space was a narrow space and as I, I'm talking about squeezed in it's a good thing ain't nothing back I wouldn't have made it but I, I got through and slid out it was easier getting out than it was getting back in when I left and went into the store, I was like, now, Lord, I've made the sign of the cross on this other car. Lord, let them be gone. When I get back, they were not. And I, now, now getting in with the wheel, and what I ended up doing is getting in the other door was more space. I got in that door, climbed over, hurt my knee. Okay, anyway, what my question is, I was glad that I was built narrow enough to make it oh thank you lord i was so glad that i have drank enough water jesus help us because i wouldn't have been able to make it not only was my truck not built for the narrow space but I, thankfully i was structured to get through to the narrow space i don't know if you've ever been to an older city here in America, we just so spoiled because we got so much space, so much big wide roads. But go to Paris, go someplace that's older. You will find yourself on narrow roads, on narrow streets, on narrow. And you are, I don't know if you've ever been where you're trying to make a turn with your American driving brain and you don't have a whole lot of space because your mindset it's not built for narrow spaces. Your car isn't built. You go to those places and you see these little cars. The cars are built because the roads are narrow. As Americans, we're used to big, giant, roomy spaces. Thus, we're used to big, giant, roomy cars to fit in the big, giant, roomy spaces of the great big space that we live in. But it's a sign as to what you were designed for. And I, I want to ask you a question. I want you to ask yourself a question, and that is, what were you built for? What were you designed for? Were you built for wide, or were you built for narrow? We offer you salvation. We offer you salvation. We offer you kingdom, a love, baby, dedication. We're praying for these children. We're praying for these families. We pray for you. We pray for you in this room. We pray for you watching literally around the world. But at the end of the day, all of the salvation, as free as it is, 
there's still the challenge of Jesus to say, now that you're saved, now that you know God, all right, I want you to make every effort to get through the narrow gates, to go through the narrow doors, because broad is the way and wide is the gate, broad is the way that leads to destruction, and there's a whole lot of folk on it. But straight is the gate and narrow is the way that leads to life. And it's not a lot of folk on the life road. And the life road is hard. The life road is narrow. The life road is a threshing road. It's a winnowing road. It's a refining road. Giant doors doesn't always mean better. Just because everybody thinks it doesn't mean it's wisdom. Just because everybody has an idea right now, we're almost being led more by majority thinking, especially one end or the other, and we just are sucked into majority thinking, and there's a pressure on us to accept majority thinking. But just because everybody thinks that don't mean it's right. And just because everybody's doing something doesn't mean it's the thing to do. And maturity requires that we enter the narrow door, the narrow gate. Because straight is that gate. Narrow is that way that leads to life. And few there be that find it. And I think that we blame death on a lot of things besides the choices that we made that had to do with the doors that we took. As a matter of fact, I contend that we've been more constructed for wide doors than narrow doors. And we need to adjust our thinking and our praying and our spirituality and our connections to figure out, okay, what is the narrow way? What is the door that's less taken? To me, that's the challenge of Christianity. It is the challenge of the cross. And when I look at this particular story, I see the narrow door. I want you to look at it with me, Luke 23. And I, 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 and I, I, I thought about sharing this on Easter, and it's just still here in my spirit. But Luke 23, it's just a very interesting story. I mean, right off the bat, we understand. It says in verse 32, two other men, both criminals, were also led out with him to be executed. And when they came to the place called the skull, they crucified Jesus there along with these criminals, one on his right, the other on his left. So just, just right there in the beginning, just something to notice that Jesus died Easter. Jesus died, but he didn't die alone. We talk about the crucifixion of Christ. It's what Christianity is based on, the death and resurrection of Christ. We, we, we talk about it. I don't know how often we talk about the fact that he died, but he wasn't by himself when he died. That there were two men that were crucified along with him. This is us. This is us. It's fitting <laughs> that the day he died, other guys died with him. So that we can even further identify with the death and resurrection of Christ. Because just accepting his death and resurrection just for you isn't enough. You also have to identify with the death and resurrection of Christ. It's why we're baptized. Because we're saying I identify with Christ being in the grave and being risen from the dead. When we take you down under the water, we're signifying you being buried and you come up to resurrected life. You identify with the death and resurrection of Christ. It's not just that you only receive the benefits that his death and resurrection bring to you, but that you also then begin to say, all right, I'm a Christian and I identify with his death and his resurrection. I identify with this moment. This is us. And what doors am I taking? What path am I on? In verse 34, it says, Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they're doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. And there's a written notice above him which read, This is the king of the Jews. <laughs> Jesus died but he didn't die angry. 
He didn't die with an attitude. This is divine. This is divine. To say, Lord, forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. Father, forgive them for the misunderstanding that's happening in this moment. Father, forgive them even though they raggedy and ratchet. Help us. Father, forgive them even they, though they're talking about me and even though they're doing evil to me. The Bible says that Jesus told them, when I get there, they're going to spit at me and they're going to hit me and they're going to try me and they're going to lie on me and they're going to turn me over to the Gentiles and they're going to kill me. To go into it knowing that you're going to be spit on and talked about and lied on at a false trial to be crucified, to be condemned to death and you know you aren't wrong and not be mad. I'm just going to let that marinate. It's enough. It's enough just to, to see Christ, to identify with that, my God, and to look at someone willing to die who was not wrong and not only die but die not mad because one of the most narrow doors to take is the door of forgiveness I wish I had some kind of souffle for everybody in here, but I'm just going to hit you right where you live. Every one of us in here got somebody that we have to forgive. Let me just lay that out. Let me speak that over the room right now. For you to say, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Father, forgive them. They have no knowledge of what they're doing. Sometimes I'm like, yeah, they know what they're doing. Father, forgive them. They know what they're doing. But they mean well. I've had to pray that prayer because folk know. They know. Father, forgive them. They know what they're doing, but they mean it for my good. Joseph said, actually, you knew what you were doing. You meant it for my evil, but God turned it around for my good. I wouldn't even have got here if you hadn't done that to me. I don't know if anybody has that testimony where if they hadn't done that to you, you wouldn't have got to where you are. You still have to forgive them, though. And if you read Joseph's story, Joseph was still a little salty. He was a little testy. But, so it's okay. It's all right. The Bible's it's okay to have a small little attitude. But when you get to the blessing that God has for you on the other side of the intentional harm done to you, you got to give God praise and you got to give God glory and you got to let those people go because they aren't thinking about you. And there's nothing worse than being so caught up in the thoughts of your uh, the thoughts of the person that hurt you the thoughts of the oppressor that you're telling your future people about what the last people did I I've been there sorry been there <laughs> I wish I could say oh yeah this is no no that's us <laughs> because to forgive is being godly what feels way better is holding people what feels way better is not talking to people. I don't even know what can say amen. But that feels real good to be like, and I'm not talking to you no more. And you'll never hear my voice again. And you'll never see my face again. And the Bible says, turn the other cheek. So there you go. <laughs> that, that is the thing that feels right. <laughs> and the challenge of Christianity, I know it's true for me because I've been preaching 40 years and I still got an attitude problem. Because the fact of the matter is, I'm trying to tell you it feels way better to just be annoyed. And I've been in church my whole life and I still don't feel right about the stuff that's right to do. Jesus says, Father, forgive them 
for they don't know what they do. I'm so sorry. Y'all got to be glad. Be glad I'm not Jesus. I'm so glad you weren't Jesus because if I was, them nails would have came out like Magneto. You understand? The minute somebody hawked a spit at me, they'd have choked on their spit. I'd have been Darth Vader. I'd have called angels down. I'd have been like, hey, are you like me now? Messiah that. I, it's a good thing. My gangster would have came out. I'd have threw that thorn crawl. For Jesus to say, Father, forgive them for spit. Woo! Forgive them for lying. Forgive them for killing me. That's divine. Verse 38. Verse 39. They're mocking him. This is the king of the Jews. This is what we do with king of Jews around here. There's a mocking to them. Verse 39, one of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. The thing that's interesting, beloved, is here we are. This is the beginning of Christianity. This is day one of Christian faith. Because Christianity started with the death and resurrection of Christ. It's the first day and there's faith there. There's faith at the death. We think that the faith started after the resurrection and the faith started up, but the faith started on the very first day. The faith started not just the faith of Jesus to know that he would die, be resurrected, absolutely, but when we look at the criminals, we see faith. The first criminal actually is upset because he knows that the Messiah has power and could get down if he wanted to. So he's saying he actually has faith in results. This is what I call the faith in results door. This is us. I want to help you find yourself in the story. I can certainly find me in the story. He says... Aren't you the Messiah? Okay, so then save yourself and save us. Meaning, God, are you alive or not? God, are you in control or not? Okay, if you're alive and if you're in control, then do something about these results now. Save me now and save yourself save your reputation God because I'm going to talk about the glory I'm going to give you when you deliver me but if you let me go down like this then folk are going to see and folk are going to talk about you and they're not going so there's the there's a feeling of no I need you to save me right now from this result right now in this particular moment I am dealing with something dire and I don't want to Save me and save your church. Save me and save your reputation as the Messiah. See how quiet it is in here? I love this. I want to be quiet myself because I definitely pray these kinds of prayers. He may not come when you want him, but he's right on time. Well, can he come when I want him? What's, what's wrong with him that he's on time? I don't want him to be on time. I want him now. I need God now. And he was, I need my thing now. I don't know. I need a breakthrough now. I, was, I need a miracle now. I need, and I'm, a li- I'm halfway a little bit on the, er, on the verge of being like, Jesus, don't do this and see how I am. There's a, there's a, and there's an absolutism of Western society in, we went, in which we want an absolute explanation of every evil that befalls us. Let something bad happen to us and either it was the devil, oh, that is the devil. 
and we go to rebuking the devil and rebuking demons and rebuking. We got all kinds of demons that we rebuke. I don't know if there's a running out of gas demon, but we will curse one. So we, we, because we, things have got to fit in the little, narrow, absolutely sure slot of our current world thought. It is absolutely the devil or God has something greater for me and he's going to take this and turn it around for my good. And I'm right there with you because I pray the same prayers. But I don't want to allow for the possibility and reality that sometimes stuff just happens. Things happen that are outside of your control. Things take place that I can't understand and explain. Folks are always looking for me to give an explanation as to why this evil befell. And I wish life was that simple. But the truth of the matter is that I have learned to have the Lord when I understand and when I don't. I'm going to make everybody put your hands together for whether you, I know it's a hard thing, but the last thing you can never do is allow a result to make you leave the Lord. It's why Paul said, what shall separate me from the love of God? What will I allow separate me from the love of God? I am persuaded that neither death nor life, no angels, no principalities, no powers, no things present, no things to come, not height, not depth, not any other thing or creature shall ever be able to separate me from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, my Lord. I have made up in my mind whether I lose the job or not, I'm still going to be with the Lord. I I have made up in my mind whether my mama recovers from the cancer or not. I am still going to worship the Lord. I was praising him before my daddy had cancer. I'm going to be praising him on the other side. You tell me something wrong with my heart? Well, for the Lord I live and for the Lord I die. You're not going to shake me off of him. I'm just a sucker like that, I guess. But I'm going to go down. I came in rocking with him and I'll go out rocking with him. When you bury me, if you bury me sick, I'll get my victory in my death but I'm not going to change my mind but we live in a world right where if it don't make sense to us we almost kind of got an attitude with God save us and save your own reputation Lord you the Messiah ain't you then what's with this layoff stuff? You the Messiah, ain't you? What's with this letting them rob me stuff? Well, you the Messiah, ain't you? Well, what's with this I lost all this money? You the Messiah, ain't you? Then what's with these people talking about me? You the Messiah, aren't you? Then why are you going to let them do me like that? Lord, you didn't have to let them do me like that. Even if you blame the devil, the Lord still allowed it. I need a witness in the building. The Lord still allowed it. Why does that happen? Why does the Lord let... Bad things happen to good people and good things happen to bad people. I know I'm not by myself. All of us know somebody blessed don't deserve it. Speak, talk to me. All of us know somebody horrible getting good stuff. We all know somebody scary, ugly, and mean and got a man. Lord help us. We all know somebody horrible and still got someone. We all know them. Y'all don't want to say it, but it's the truth. Y'all all know somebody that don't deserve man the first and got a man. My favorite show, My 600 Pound Life, they always got a man. Okay, anyway. My, what I'm saying to you is, let me get back to the Bible. Hmm. I have fussed at the Lord. I have said, Lord, how are you going to let this good, serving, faithful, consistent member of the church get something? If you want somebody to take, I'll tell you some people. Got a list. 
And then we get into trouble because we're trying to make sense of it. I've heard all kinds of stuff. Well, uh, God has a flower garden. Uh, and uh, sometimes uh, he needed a flower. Uh, and so he took our dear sister uh, and planted her in the flower garden. I'm like, well, Lord, if you need a flower, why don't you just make a flower? Why you got to take my grandmama and make a flower? We can't just say, I don't know. I heard a preacher say, hmm, and number came up. And when your number come up, you got to go to glory. Sometimes your number, you go when you, like God is up there. Seven. God is playing numbers. And your number came up. He got all by himself. And when your number come up, you got to go to glory. I'm like, well, thank you, God for playing numbers with my life. You ain't got nothing better to do. Why? Because we can't admit, we just don't know. Just say, I don't know, I don't know. Just say, I don't know. Everybody say, I don't know. I don't know. Your smartphone won't tell you. Hey Siri, Siri don't know. The other criminal rebuked him. He said, don't you fear God since you're under the same sentence? Because death brings clarity. In verse 41, he says, we are punished justly for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. I'm going to put something on the screens that says, what our deeds deserve. Put it up there, please. What our deeds deserve. Sorry, but I think if there's anything we are unrealistic about, it's that phrase right there. What our deeds deserve. Very rarely do we adequately define what our deeds deserve. Most of the time we make excuses for our deeds. Most of the time we throw off on everybody else's fault except ours. Most of the time we want to make everybody else think it's them. Very rarely do we say, actually, I blew it. Actually, I didn't do the best. Actually, I tried, but I didn't make it. No, what we'd rather do is self-justify and then get an attitude with the death that comes as a result of what our deeds actually deserve. This man actually says, actually, we're getting what we should get. Clearly, they know each other. He says, this man has done nothing wrong, but we are reaping what we have sown. I'm going to speak that over you and me and everybody under the sound of my voice because my prayer is, Lord, help me to deal with the things that I'm reaping that I sowed. It's me, oh Lord. Everybody touch yourself. It's me. Say, it's me. It's me, oh Lord. Not my brother, not my sister, but it's me. If every sermon you hear, you're like, my uncle need to hear this, then you are missing it. Every sermon can't be for everybody else. I sure do wish my girlfriend was here. No, no, no. You need to hear the word. But we are quick to justify our own deeds and condemn others, we judge ourselves by our intentions. I know it's, and other people by what they actually did. This, this criminal actually says, no, actually, we've done some wrong stuff. Actually, if perfection is required for the miracle, ain't nobody in here gonna get nothing from the Lord. It's his mercy. It's his grace. I said, it's his mercy. It's his grace. 
The whole time you're showing somebody your house, you should be, you should be saying, but his mercy was sufficient, but his grace was sufficient. And let me show you the living room, but before I show it to you, can I tell you, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, and let me, can I introduce you to my man, but can I just tell you, before, I, before you see him, let me tell you, if it had not been for Jesus, because I was sinking deep in sin, and I didn't always do all the right stuff, and I haven't always had it all together, but God saw fit to bless me. Something's wrong if you can't be grateful about the blessing that you you're not realistic about what your deeds deserve because you don't really deserve nothing of what God has done for you. I wish I could get a witness in the building. He made a way where there was no way. Don't think of yourself more highly than you ought. Then he says, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And beloved, this is the most narrow door of all. It's the whole point of my sermon, and it's taking me almost 30 minutes to get there and maybe a little bit more, but that's okay because I'm not really looking at the clock. I mean, I am. The most narrow door is the door where you believe that your blessing is on the other side of the death you're facing. In the moment, hanging from a cross, you don't even understand it, hanging from a cross in pain. This criminal's hurling insults and upset because he's in pain. Because he's nailed to a cross. Because he's about to die. They're about to come break his legs so he can die. This criminal says to Jesus, Jesus, even though right now my situation looks dire, and yes, you could save me from this if you wanted to, but if that's not the plan, remember me when we pass through this door of death because I believe that there's a life on the other side of the death I now face. That's faith in the resurrection door. The man actually said, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said, you going to be with me in paradise today. Today, you're going to be with me in paradise. Meaning, yeah, because I'm not going to save you from this death. You're going to die. But when you open up your eyes, you're going to be in something that you never imagined before. I came to tell somebody right now that what looks like the end ain't the end. Not if the Lord is involved in it. If you're in a relationship with him, he'll take the crooked and make it straight. Right, Al? He'll take death and make it life. He'll say, no, no, no. I want you to walk with me through this. But when you get to the other side of it, you're going to be in a paradise you never imagined. I need a witness in the building that you ask God to deliver you from something and he did not. And when you came to the other side, you realized, you know what? God's plan was better. I said God's plan was better. What God had for me was better. What God knew what he was doing. And I had to have faith through the death. I had to have faith through the scariest moment of my life. I had to have faith through walking through a door that everyone else said, this is the end of your career. This is the end of your money. This is the end of your relationship. This is the end of this thing. And I had to face that end and believe that the God that I trusted on this side of the door is the same God that will meet me on the other side of the door. And that, beloved, is the narrow way. That's the narrow way. And the people that we see that we admire the most are folk who take that narrow door. People who are willing to leave everyone they know and go to a place where they don't know anybody and experience amazing blessing. People who are willing to face the death of what they've currently known 
Young man came up to me last Sunday saying, and they've laid me off from my job. And I didn't want to say hallelujah, but there's a part of me that says, oh, hallelujah. Just because this is ending doesn't mean that this is the end of you, that you don't know what God's about to do. So go ahead and walk through the door. I'm speaking that to somebody. Go ahead and walk through the door. You have fought with everything within you. You did the best you could. You did the best you could at that job. And they laying you off anyway. And you know they ain't right. And they know they ain't right. But that's okay. Because they're not in control of your life. Because they're not your source. They're not the ones who's watching. God sees and knows. And can I tell you, God got a way of doing things. And I like how he do what he do. And he'll take you through that if you walk through the door we got to be careful that we don't load ourselves up with stuff and can't fit through the door we don't complain so much we can't fit through the door we don't fuss so much we can't fit so through we don't cut so many people out we can't fit through the door we're so busy telling a new employer about what our last employer did that we can't get through the door it's okay God can bless you on the other side of this death. I'm going to speak that to everybody right now. God can bless you on the other side of this death. The darkest days are only dark if you don't realize you're in a tomb about to be resurrected. If you find yourself in a dark place, I'm a living witness. I'm a living witness. If you find yourself in a dark place, give the Lord a day. He going to resurrect you. Give the Lord a day. He going to say, Lazarus, come. Give the Lord a day. He going to say, Tyrus, come. Give the Lord a day. You're on your deathbed. Give God a day. You are, you're facing something. Give God a day. God will call your name. And the life you have on the other side will be a whole nother thing. Won't he do it? I said, won't he do it? Won't he make the wrong right? Won't he make the dark day? Won't he make your crooked straight? Won't he make the way plain? Won't he do it? Won't he bless you in yourself? Won't he do it? Won't he take your money and multiply it supernaturally? I need a witness. Won't he do it? Won't he bring back the enemies and make them sit at your feet and tell you how great? Won't he will? Won't he will? Won't he do it? He'll make a way where there seems to be no way he sits high and he looks low and he likes it when you sad he likes it when you humble he likes it when you're when he's all you have I've come to the place where I found when he was all I had he was all I need Jesus is all I need I didn't find that out till everybody left me I didn't find that out till everybody abandoned me I didn't find that out till folk talked about me and spoke about me in evil and manner against me falsely guess what you are in the perfect position for God to turn it all around for your good Put your hands together if you're a believer. Put your hands together if you're a believer. Put your hands together if that narrow door don't bother you. Put your hands together if you ain't worried about what the enemy's trying to do. Put your hands together if you're not worried about what folk are saying about you. Somebody give God a praise. It doesn't matter what they say. It doesn't matter what they think. It don't matter the misunderstanding. God has a way. Turning things around for your good. Stand to your feet with me. Let's pray. God, thank you for the narrow door. Straight is the gate. Narrow is the way that leads to life. And there's not a lot of folk on it. Broad is the way. Wide is the path that leads to destruction. And there's a whole lot of folk on that door. But God, we are determined to enter through the narrow gate. We're going to forgive. Lord, help us. We're going to let folk go. God, forgive us. Help us. Lord, we're not going to just judge you by the results. Lord, we are willing to walk through the door of death and fear no evil because you're with us. Now, God, I pray that you would confirm your word with signs and wonders. God, I pray that you would confirm your word with signs and wonders. I pray, God, for miracles this week. I pray, God, for breakthrough. I pray, God, for confirmation. 
I pray, God, for calls about interviews. God, I pray for blessings that overtake us. God, I pray for new opportunities. For those of us who have been robbed, give us a new opportunity. God, I pray for those of us who are dealing with sickness. May something take place in us, God. May we see the light at the end of the tunnel and know that you are God anyway. We're asking you to fill us with yourself. We want to identify with the death and resurrection of Christ. We want to do the hard thing. Oh God, help us, help us, help us. As you refine us, help us to know that you're refining us for a greater glory. You have a purpose for me. You have a purpose for everybody on the front row. You have a purpose for everybody on the second row. You have a purpose for everybody on the third row all the way to the back, from the least to the greatest, from the room to every room watching around the world. Lord, you know exactly who we are. Empty us supernaturally of our fear and fill us up with the God kind of faith. So that our youth is restored like the eagles. We want to run and not be weary. We want to walk and not faint. Thank you for living so big in us today. Thank you for speaking to us and through us. Thank you for your anointing that destroys the yoke. Now God dismiss us from this place, but never from your presence. Cover us with your blood as we're about to leave and go home. As we're about to go somewhere and sit down and eat a biscuit. God, may we fellowship and talk about what you're about to do to turn our situation around. Thank you for the babies that we dedicated. Thank you for the songs that we sang. Thank you for every believer that watched wherever they were. Thank you that your hand is on us for good. We trust you and we pray that you will bless your people and make your face shine upon your people and be gracious to your people and give us peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Bring us back next Sunday, God. We're talking about this is us. We're finding ourselves in the Bible and we're walking in this relationship with you, God. We're determined nothing shall make us leave you. We're going to hold to you. And God, we pray that the words of our mouth and the meditations of our heart be acceptable in your sight. You're our rock, you're our redeemer. We love you in Jesus' name. We all sit together. Amen. God bless you. You're dismissed. Thanks for coming to church. God bless you. See you next Sunday. God bless you, E-Church family. Wow, what a tremendous word from our senior pastor today, the narrow door. Listen, if you miss any part of this sermon, I'm encouraging you to go back to the beginning so that you can make sure that you watch it from the very beginning, from our worship experience up to the word. I'm Pastor Tyrus, the senior associate pastor here, and I just want to say thank you so much for tuning in today. We have definitely, definitely, definitely heard from the Lord. Now, look, I need you to do me a favor. Let me know where you're watching from. Type it in the chat right now. Of course, you can see I have my phone in my hand. I want to know where you are watching from, E-Church family. I need to know where you're watching from, okay? Look, and if this is your first time watching with us, we want to know where you're from, and we also want to connect with you. So you can definitely text EFAM to 336-815-7550. Again, that's text EFAM to 336-815-7550. Again, go ahead in the chat. Let me know, where are you watching from? How can we pray with you? You can definitely submit your prayer requests to us right here by texting or emailing contact at World Overcomers, contact at wocconline.org. Again, that's contact at wocconline.org. Let us know how we can pray with you. If you need any information about our church, you can always visit our website at worldovercomers.church. Yes, E-Church family, we want to connect with you. We want to stay connected to you. Those of you who are members of World Overcomers, and maybe you're traveling for work, 
or maybe you're on your family vacation today, we want to say hey to you. We are glad that you've tuned in. And I know that you were blessed by the word of our senior pastor today. So again, our first time guests and those of you who are connecting with us for the very first time in our e-church, we want you to text EFAM, that's E-F-A-M, to 336-815-7550. Let me repeat that again for you. You're texting EFAM, E F. A.M. to 336-815-7550. Now, as you can see, if you are out of town, we want you to make plans to visit us in person. We want you to make plans to join us because in this lobby, as you can see, we got a lot going on. You have my sister's closet, which is dedicated to our mission, our global mission, which is Projects of Hope, where we go to Kenya every single year and we do a lot of amazing things there. To learn more about it, you can go right to projectsofhope.org or you can hop onto our website, worldovercomers.church, go to our missions tab and click Projects of Hope and you can learn more about that there. We want you to be a part of it. So again, in our lobby today, I know you're a part of our eChurch fam, but we don't want to leave you out and we know that you want to be a part of what we have going on. So make sure you hop on to worldovercomers.church. Also, we want you to plan, make plans to attend with us in person. We have our man-made event. Yes, men's ministry relaunched, and it's relaunched as man-made, and we want you to come and be a part of that. That's going to be on Saturday, May the 4th from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Now, here's a good thing, man. It is totally free of charge to you. And dude, we have the menu. We got the beast feast. So you got hamburgers, hot dogs, chicken, ribs, and all that other good stuff that goes along with it. And we want you to come out and be a part. Con hole. We'll even be throwing axes that day. Yes, not at one another, but we'll be throwing axes at trees on that day. Come out and be a part of it. Enjoy with some men that have like faith and just hear a word of inspiration from our senior pastor. Again, that's Men's Ministry Relaunch, and it's called Man Made, and we're going to have that on March, May the 5th, May the 4th, 2024 at 11 a.m. It's going to be right on land that we own on Cheek Road. We own 63 acres of land, and we want y'all to come and enjoy that time with us. All right, so let me run that back for you one more time. If you're first time visiting with us or you are just a part of our eChurch family who live out of state and you join us every single week, we want you to text EFAM, E-F-A-M, to 336-815-7550. Again, text that for me. Text EFAM to 336-815-7550. I want you to be a part of that. We have the single ladies brunch that's coming up. We have the young adults hike that's coming up. We have our man-made uh, event that's coming up. And we want you to be a part of it. So if I've given you too much too fast, not a problem at all. You can always visit us online at www.worldovercomers.church and you can find all of the information that we're talking about there. Look, I'm Pastor Tyrus. I'm really filling in for Pastor John Davis, who is our online, our e-church pastor. I'm just filling in for him today, but I want you to know that we are so glad that you made this time to share with us today. And I know you'll be blessed by the word of our senior pastor today about that narrow door. I'm telling you, if you hopped on late, go back and grab some of that worship and make sure you hear the entirety of our pastor's message today. It has been my pleasure to share and host you this afternoon at our 10 a.m. service that goes right around two hours. Actually, we're a little early today. 12.07, we are out. And as you're on your way to brunch, we want to encourage you to take the Lord with you wherever you go. Notice we are living balance, victory, for this God-designed life. God bless you, E-Church family. Until next Sunday at 10 a.m., we'll see you. God bless you, and the Lord be with you. Pastor Tyrus, signing off.
stay here for a lifetime Blessings from my God, I know you're right here, right here by my side Stay here for a lifetime Blessings from my God, I know I met Christ my whole life changed up used to aim low but now we aim up and we used to stay low but now we way up and we spirit feel spirit feel spirit feel feel with the spirit this my life let them hear it spirit feel spirit feel spirit feel feel with the spirit this my life let them hear it I'm praying that you catch this on overthrow. True. My heart was super cold like it's polar snow. Ooh. 